Hey guys, Galactic Knight here. You know, last weekend I was watching a series called Has Been a Hotel on Amazon Prime. It was cleverly written, beautifully animated, and had a very catchy song and a story that basically takes place in hell. The ironic thing is this actually started as a standalone pilot on the YouTube channel Busy Pop who have their own show, Hell of a Boss, still streaming today with plenty of views. I wanted to bring this up because I wanted to ask the question if Hollywood blockbusters are losing their appeal. We are seeing big budget studios have been losing more viewers and people that make their own projects for fun are getting more attention, even from bigger companies. But some of you are probably wondering what defines as an indie project or an indie production studio. Usually an independent film or project is produced outside the major studio system in addition to being produced and distributed by independent entertainment companies, or in some cases, major companies. Now, independent projects have been around for a while. In fact, you could say most YouTube videos have been known to be independent films. I mean, the definition means one that is independent. I myself have also has done some independent films linked down in the description. Heck, there are some films I and others didn't know were indie films. Pulp Fiction, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Clerks, even films by John Carpenter and Robert Rodriguez were technically low-budget films. Heck, Walt Disney's first feature-length film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, was basically made using his own money. Some saying that it was too risky and being the downfall of Disney, but becoming a hit and showing that fully animated movies could make big money. And it's not just films that are independent. Games like Cuphead, Undertale, Shovel Knight, and others have become popular in their genres they're in and their followings with the likes of Mario and Sonic. Even with freaky fan art, I am too scared to put on YouTube. Yikes. And self-published books are also more involved more over time. So with so many independent projects out there, why is it so hard for them to compete with big budget filmmakers? Well, for one, the obvious reason is... Money! Let me explain. Most movies usually cost around $100 million to make. Maybe a bit more depending on the film. Plus, advertisements cost a lot too to promote the film to a worldwide audience. Also, big budget films have big budget movie stars. Okay, some indie films have big stars, but I think someone like Mark Wahlberg will be remembered in a big action film rather than a low budget film. On the other hand, some famous actors actually started out with independent filmmaking. Mark Ruffalo, Scarlett Johansson, Christian Bale, even celebrities like Jennifer Aniston, Daniel Day-Lewis, and of course the late Robert Williams have started independent films, while also being big name celebrities. Also, if you compare an indie film with a mainstream movie, you can definitely tell the difference in production. With a higher budget, directors will get the sets, actors, effects, and so on for the film or games, which, whether you look at it, can either make it a big success or have an expensive bomb. The other problem with indie creators is, ironically, Hollywood itself. Whenever you create a video on YouTube, sometimes you might get a copyright strike or a claim when a copyrighted material is used in your video. Some companies even email cease and desist to creators of fan-made games. This, of course, has started the Where's the Fair Use movement. Even just having a song in a movie costs a lot of money without getting a lawsuit. And the final problem with independent projects is when they get to mainstream themselves. Which, let's be honest, when Hollywood sees something that works, they're going to exploit it. After the Blair Witch Project came out, found footage exploded on the scene and became more gimmicky and too predictable. Even gave a sequel to the Blair Witch that was horrible. And when a company buys a property, sometimes they make a version that works or doesn't. And let's be honest, some indie games can suck a bit. Yeah, some jagass thinks he can make a crappy game with a quick buck and make a ton of money for it. Movies too. Yeah, you can have an all-star cast as much as you want, but if a bad CGI film from 2002 is all you got to give, the name Alan Smithy would probably be used a lot due to you. So with that in mind, how do most creators get by with all that against them? Well, there are some ways around a budget with filmmaking. The Blair Witch Project just used three cameras and footage shot on their own, starting to make the found footage genre popular with the horror demographic. 
and now that the 8-bit style of the 80s and 90s is just the style, developers have made creative games like Shovel Knight and Cave Story, creating fresh ideas for stories and characters for a new fan base. Even fan-made projects are starting to get back up. Sonic Mania, a fan game promoted by Sega, not only got Sonic back in the mainstream, but became a fan favorite of the Sonic franchise. It's crazy how a fan game became part of the Sonic library. George Lucas even had a film contest to have fan-made Star Wars films themselves. So not only did a film created by a fan of a sci-fi created giant sci-fi franchise, but inspired other filmmakers to create their own Star Wars films. And when Five Nights at Freddy's became a cinematic movie the fan made song by the living tombstone actually got into the credits so there's an indie game that became a movie that put a fan song in the credits so yeah indie projects are more popular than ever and definitely not going away what does that mean for hollywood well for one thing they need to make more risks i don't mean change a character's race or sex or identity i mean not play it safe because let's be honest playing it safe doesn't always work in the end Hell, sometimes the opposite can't seem to work. And don't get me wrong, I like to watch a comfortable movie now and again, but sometimes I like a little bit of variety. I think that's what advantage a lot of independent projects have. Giving us new ideas, stories, genres, and even characters a new wider audience can watch, play, and enjoy. Companies are always going to give us adaptation after adaptation, and if we want to see that, we will but they are also seeing the success of these indie projects and creating uh, those projects as well. Remember how the Blair Witch Project started the found footage genre? I would now came up with other found footage movies to continue that genre. As with video games, companies can produce them giving a wider audience than just on Steam. So if you're wondering if we should start supporting more independent projects, in a way, we kind of are. As fans, we watch the latest episode, download the games, and talk about the lore, and that basically is promoting the projects, creating more of a following, like we do with other fan bases we enjoy. So to some extent, enjoy the fan bases you love, whether independent, low budget, big budget, or both. Action. If you got a favorite indie darling I didn't put in the video, well, leave it in the comments below and keep the fan art appropriate in front of me. I'm Galactic Knight, and I'll see you guys next time. Seriously, who would want to boink Bendy? Hey guys, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more updates on my latest video. Check out my social media, and see you guys next time.